From the Global Times, I am Mulan. Welcome to the GT Podcast with Mulan, a one-stop shop for the Global Times take on top China and global news. In today's podcast, China's efforts to help build an open world economy that benefits all continue as it hosts the world's first supply chain expo in Beijing. As global attention continues to focus on the Palestine-Israel issue, China's top diplomat reiterated calls for complete ceasefire while chairing high-level UN meeting. Following the Chinese-U.S. leaders' meeting in San Francisco, how the two countries can deepen bilateral people-to-people -people exchanges. Will Argentina, under President-elect Javier Milei, tilt fully toward the U.S.? A Global Times editorial says improving relations with the U.S. doesn't have to antagonize others. As China pursues dual carbon goals, Beijing's taxi industry, which is shifting to full new energy utilization, serves as a window into China's efforts for a green future. The China International Supply Chain Expo, or CISCE, kicked off in Beijing this week, bringing together hundreds of political and business leaders from around the world to strengthen cooperation and safeguard the stability of global industrial and supply chains amid mounting risks and challenges for global trade. At the opening ceremony, Chinese Premier Li Qiang said that China stands ready to work with all parties to build more resilient, efficient, and dynamic global industrial and supply chains, while warning against disruptions to global cooperation that will hurt many countries. Underscoring the widespread desire among global businesses for stable industrial supply chains, 515 Chinese and foreign companies are attending the five-day expo, of which 26 percent are from overseas. Notably, many U.S. and European companies signed up for the expo, even though they face costs to decouple or de-risk from China by Western politicians. Many global businesses at the CISCE also stress the need to safeguard international supply chains and China's vital role in the effort. FedEx Express, a subsidiary of U.S.-based FedEx Corp, said as trade globalization continues to evolve, global industrial and supply chains have become increasingly interconnected. China plays a pivotal role in driving the steady growth of the world economy. At the UN, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi reiterated the country's stance on the Palestine-Israel conflict, stressing that China stands firmly on the side of peace and called for a complete ceasefire, as well as the implementation of a two-state solution as soon as possible. Wang traveled to New York to chair a UN Security Council high-level meeting on the issue, as China is the rotating president of the UN Security Council for November. The move comes at a key juncture, as Palestine and Israel observe a temporary truce. It highlights the most pressing issues and lays the foundation for the future solution of the Palestine issue. In a meeting with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Wang said that China supports the UN and the Secretary General in playing their unique and irreplaceable role in resolving the Palestine-Israel conflict. Wang also outlined China's positions: first, there should be no reignition of the war, and a complete ceasefire should be achieved to avoid greater humanitarian disasters, and the hostages should be released. Second, unhindered access of humanitarian supplies to Gaza needs to be ensured. And third, the two-state solution should be restarted at an early date. At the Chinese-U.S. leaders' meeting in San Francisco, it was announced that China is ready to invite 50,000 young Americans to China on exchange and study programs over the next five years. To increase exchanges between the two peoples, especially between the youths.
This could go a long way in helping stabilizing bilateral ties, according to Yang Wanmin, head of the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries, or CPAFFC. In an interview with the Global Times, Yang said, "Amity between the people holds the key to sound state-to-state relations." As an organization engaged in people-to-people diplomacy in China, the CPAFFC aims to enhance people's friendship, further international cooperation, safeguard world peace, and promote common development. To deepen the exchanges between the peoples of China and the U.S., the CPAFFC has engaged various initiatives. It invited the Flying Tigers to return to China after 80 years for a 10-day visit in early November. It also co-hosted the fifth China-U.S. Sister Cities Conference, themed "Build Green Cities for the People" in November. It wants to invite more Americans, especially the young, to visit China. You can't really grasp everything about China just by looking at social media. You have to be here to experience all the amazing different cultures that China has to offer," Yang said. Argentina's president-elect Javier Milei's trip to the U.S. has drawn widespread attention among observers, with some wondering whether Argentina, under Milei's leadership, will tilt fully toward the U.S. and potentially break away from important trade partners such as China and Brazil. The Global Times editorial said that, as a sincere friend of Argentina, China also hopes that Argentina can quickly overcome its current challenges and embark on a better development trajectory. If the U.S. can indeed provide assistance to Argentina, helping it to recover economically and allowing the people to enjoy more well-being, this is something that the international community, including China, is pleased to see. But it's questionable whether the U.S. will actually do so. In Latin America, there are many examples in which countries fully align with the U.S. but don't receive any real help. Argentina itself has also suffered from this approach. The editorial reads: Previously, some people intentionally hyped up the claim that Argentina would decouple from China and Brazil. But in the process of overcoming Argentina's difficulties, the logic and interests of the Milley team and the Argentine people in developing relations with countries like China and Brazil are aligned, according to the editor. Beijing's taxi drivers, who do not shy away from share their views on global affairs, are a distinguished part of the capital city's rich tapestry. This group, with a literal and figurative front row seat to the changing times, is now leading another trend in China: a grassroots-level, society-wide green campaign. China explicitly proposed national dual carbon goals, intending to hit a carbon peak by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. As a specific measure following this, in May 2022, the Beijing Municipal People's Government issued a plan stating that all cruising taxis in the city will be fully converted to new energy sources by 2025. As the 28th Conference of the Parties, or COP28, to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change kicks off in Dubai, many are watching China's efforts. In pursuing its dual carbon goals, the over 60,000 taxis in Beijing will serve as a small yet significant window into China's broader dual carbon wave, reflecting the country's commitment to high quality development. And EVs have become a crucial part of China's emission reduction efforts. As of the end of June 2023, China's national stock of NEVs reached 16.2 million units, accounting for 4.9 percent of the total number of vehicles, and that number is expected to grow exponentially in the coming years. That's all for this edition of the GT Podcast with Mulan. Make sure to follow the Global Times on Twitter and Facebook to stay tuned. You can also check out our podcast 
articles, and much more on our website at globaltimes.cn. Thank you.